This video right here is gonna either make or break your career in engineering. I'm not joking about this. This is probably the single most important video I want you to watch because if you understand what I'm about to explain to you and if you really absorb it and just kind of watch it and just take it and put it all and install it as software in your brain and put it as a new program in your brain, you're gonna absolutely crush it in your career and you're gonna have nothing to worry about. And the reason I'm recording this video is because I was going through my LinkedIn profile and man, it's so depressing. All these people getting laid off and so many layoffs and it just breaks makes my heart see people saying, hey guys, I just got laid off. Like someone knows someone who has a job or something like that. And my heart goes out to these people and I have a lot of respect for these people. And these people are very courageous for putting themselves out there. But I don't want you to be these people. I don't want you to ever be in a situation where you have to ask for a job or if you're in a situation where you get laid off and you don't know what to do. I don't ever want you to be in that situation. So I want you to pay attention to this video and I want you to take the two things I'm gonna be talking about because there's really only two things that matter. And these two things will make or break your engineering and career. Now, as a human, you have finite time and you have finite energy on this earth, right? You have a life that's like starts at age zero, ends at age however long it takes, and then you have energy that is finite as well. And how you allocate this time and energy really determines the outcomes that you get. But these are not the two things that I want to talk about. The two things I really want to talk about are mindset and skill set. These are the only two things that matter. And I'm going to walk you in this video through how you can shift your paradigm and basically maximize your chances, both in terms of mindset and skill set to basically put yourself in the most optimal place possible where you never ever have to worry about getting laid off or anything of that sort. In fact, I want you to be in a position where people come to you for jobs and people beg you so that you can go and work for them. And that's really the frame we want to place you in. Now, both of these two things, the mindset and the skill set, require two components. And one component is just a decision, but the second component is an ongoing thing. And that ongoing thing requires a lot of pain. And we're gonna talk about pain in a little bit and why pain is actually very good and very important for what I'm about to describe to you. Now, the framework that we're going to build everything on top of in this case is cause and effect. It's basically the same framework that was made where Isaac Newton was writing about uh, classical mechanics and Newton's third law where every action causes an equal and opposite reaction. And what we're basically going to be doing for the rest of the video is talking about how we can set the optimal set of actions such that we increase the odds of getting the optimal reactions given to us back by the universe as a feedback loop. Now also we're going to be using a lot of probability language because that's just the reality of the world. I hate to break it to you but nothing in life is guaranteed and life is probably not that fair. Probably. Again, use the word probably because all we have control over is just to be able to observe and assign values to things. And that's what statistics is. And that's what allows us to think probabilistically. So what I'm about to describe to you will only increase the odds of putting you in the optimal position. There's no way to absolutely guaranteed protect yourself, but you can at least increase the odds and do all you can to increase the odds and stack the deck in your favor. So let's start with mindset. Mindset is very important. And mindset is basically the software that you write in your brain about what you think of yourself and the world. And that's pretty much it. So in other words, it's basically self-image and outlook on the world. And that's extremely important because mindset alone is usually the single difference between someone like Elon Musk who's out there building companies and pursuing his dreams and someone else who's just like stuck at their own home, like doing absolutely nothing with their lives because they have the belief that they can't really do anything useful with their life. And the decision you need to make with mindset is that you are capable and you will do the things you want to do. And you have to sit down with yourself and figure out what it is that you want and you have to actually believe and come to terms that it is possible and come to terms to accepting that anything you want is possible. If you can visualize it, there's a quote by Walt Disney and I love it. It says, if you can dream it, you can do it. If there's something you can picture in your mind, the odds are extremely high that you can do it. You can absolutely do it, but you have to take the decision, make the decision that you actually want to do it and believe that you can do it. And if you have not done anything substantial with your life and it's very hard for you to accept the belief that you can do something very hard, just look to your other fellow human beings. Look at all the other humans who have done extraordinary things. Every human is really capable of doing something extraordinary. They just have to decide and accept that they're actually capable of doing that. Now that's the decision that you need to make with mindset. The ongoing action that you're going to need with mindset is a lot of work because you're going to interface with a lot of people on day to day basis, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be average people on the street, and they're going to instill their beliefs on you. If you're not careful, you're going to tell them about an idea and they're gonna be like, Oh, no, 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 that's not gonna work. That's a waste of time. And you need to be super careful with that because other people's beliefs, you kind of need to put a shield. And instead of just kind of taking them at face value, you kind of put a wall between other people's beliefs and you and you're basically kind of sneaking through the wall. And you're basically looking and thinking, hmm, do I want to accept that belief? Do I want to adopt that thought process? No, maybe not. And the way to decide that is to see whether it serves your goal or not. And I'll give you an example. When I was starting my YouTube channel, a lot of people were supportive. A lot of my friends, a lot of my family were supportive. Some people were like, Oh, man, like, you don't need to do that. You're doing a PhD, you're an engineer, you have a great job. Like, 
like don't just be a freaking youtuber and i was very conscious of that and again i had my wall my belief wall where i would basically look at that and i would observe and i would say huh is that belief serving me should i adopt these ideas and i would say absolutely not and i wouldn't like cut these people off i would just try to avoid talking about that topic with them or initially i would like politely disagree with them i'll say no i really don't think that's the case because x y and z and very often they would agree or we just kind of move on but if they keep insisting on disagreeing or whatnot i would just kind of move on from the topic and that's me being very conscious of the beliefs other people are instilling on me and me making sure that i don't adopt them and this is why i usually only take advice from people who have the results that i want because usually the people who have the result that you want have the belief that they can do it which means they have the belief that you can do it as well so they can give you really good advice on that thing now keeping your beliefs intact is actually very hard if you're not getting proper sleep so something i've noticed is on days where i'm not very well rested it's much more easier for me to get influenced by other people especially if they have negative beliefs and that makes the whole mindset thing really much more difficult to cultivate so being in peak physical condition definitely makes increase the odds of you being able to write really good software in your brain and again this whole mindset thing and beliefs is where i see a lot of students like fail immediately because they go into engineering school they go into college they go into a job whatever it is they go into and they have the belief as oh this is going to be hard and because they have installed that belief in their brain the reticular activating system a piece of software basically in the brain is going to only scan and focus on the parts that actually confirm that belief and we basically will have confirmation bias around the idea that oh yeah this assignment is hard this is hard this is hard you're going to only start seeing the actual hard parts because you have adopted the belief that this is going to be hard so yes it will be hard and i don't know if you can see behind me over there there's a poster by henry ford and there's a quote next to the picture of henry ford and he says whether you think you can or you can't you're right and he's basically saying is that if you have a belief that you can do something you're right if you have the belief that you can do something you're also right because again based on the belief or the piece of software that you're writing into the operating system your brain is going to scan for something that aligns with them and that will become your reality and there's really two realities there's like the physical objective reality but then there's your perception of reality and your perception of reality is basically dependent entirely on the beliefs you adopt and the software you write in your brain which allows you to kind of scan and look for the things that align with your beliefs now this is also another example of why it is very important to have friends and people in your circle of influence who are either like-minded aligned in goals or have the things that you want or have the kind of life that you want is because you're basically going to be adopting the beliefs again belief trumps all mindset sits on the bottom and mindset is the foundation and everything else builds on top of mindset what you think is true about yourself and the world literally determines everything else that you do so usually people who have the kind of results that you want they already have gotten the beliefs in check and by hanging out with them basically through osmosis you start adopting their beliefs which is usually a very good thing and now again that takes care of the mindset aspect which is part one which again will prime you to have at least adopted the view that again you are worthy you are capable and you, and you can do whatever you set your mind to do and that's okay now let's talk about the fun stuff which is skill set part two and this is extremely important because at the end of the day having the beliefs and the right mindset in check is good for your own benefit so you can go acquire skills and so you can go interface with people and so you can project confidence that is real and that is based on facts but in order to have your confidence fully based on facts you need skill set you need skills and the best way in my opinion to define skills is like a set of actions that you can do that benefit society or benefit someone else where you can ideally get paid in return for example one skill could be to write computer programs another skill is to design a tennis third skill is to be able to like carry very heavy weights fourth skill is to be able to like write advertisements for a company or for a business another skill is to be able to teach people how to do a certain like pose in yoga or something like that there's basically many 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 skills and society rewards skills based on supply and demand basically skills that are very highly in demand and limited in supply will be compensated very well and on the other hand skills that are like very abundant in supply and no one really wants them no one's really going to value that much for example very often you may hear about like amazon workers or people at amazon striking or at other companies for not getting paid enough and the reality is that their skills are just not like well in demand and actually this argument right here is why a lot of people do not get compensated well if you're doing a job that is like anybody really can do that means really the supply is infinite like there's eight billion people on the planet if i don't know if the scale is to just like walk and like say something or like put stuff in a box or like do something that is very simple that does not require much cognition or critical thinking anybody can do it which means the supply is very high which means really no matter how large the demand is you're not really going to be compensated by it versus if you're doing like a very unique set of skills for example you're able to design an antenna and you're able to write computer programs that basically help perform an analysis on your antenna design and you lock both of them together and then you can go into the lab and fabricate the actual antenna like that's a set of skills that is valuable because it's in demand by many companies and many governments and many organizations 
antennas, but it's limited in supply. Not many people study electrical engineering, not many people specialize in antenna design, and not many people have the combination of antenna design, software, and fabrication, for example. And that basically makes you more desirable in the marketplace. Now, here's where most people go wrong about skill set. A lot of people will say, oh, what's really hot right now? Let me go get that. Oh, like a computer science degree is hot. Let me go learn how to program. And yes, for example, learning how to write computer programs and think like a computer scientist and think like a software engineer, those are very highly in-demand skills. But if that's something you're not interested in, you're going to suck. The reality that I have observed is that you're only going to be good at the things that you're truly curious about. So my advice is to follow your own curiosity and develop skill set around that and build a skill set around that. And if you don't really know what you're curious about, go for like a generalized set of skills that are still valuable, but still try to put them within a scope that you're interested in. I'll give you a very simple example is when I was in high school, I was more interested in like filming and writing and more artistic, creative things, broadcasting. But then when I went, went to college, I wanted to study something practical and that would give me a return on investment for the money I was paying for college. So I studied engineering. But within engineering, I chose the one that resonated with me the most, the one that was most artistic and required the highest amount of imagination. And in my case, it was electrical engineering. And the reason I really chose electrical engineering is because electrical engineering is basically made up of invisible stuff. Like electric fields are invisible. Magnetic fields are invisible. Electromagnetic waves, yes, within the visible light region, you can actually see them. But the whole idea is that the concept is so abstract, which allows you to project your own ideas and creativity onto it. And as a result, because it piqued my interest and my curiosity gravitated towards it, I was a lot more skilled at electrical engineering than I was at mechanical engineering per se. And even though let's say society equally values electrical engineers and mechanical engineers, although I think electrical engineers are probably a bit more valuable nowadays, that doesn't matter because I was far more interested in the electrical stuff and the stuff that required more imagination, more abstraction. I was able to put in more time, ask more questions, dive more deep, watch more YouTube videos, read more books, and basically dive really deep and understand very deeply how to become the best electrical engineer I personally can be. And again, that's because I took my interest and I found an arena where I can basically explore that interest. Now, while you want to follow your interest and with the idea of skill set, you want to build skills that basically pique your interest, not everything is going to go your way. There's going to be a lot of pain. So the next thing I want to talk about is pain. Pain is inevitable. I hate to break it to you, but whoever is making videos out there that's saying you can just like dream of something and it will just like come to your door, like those law of attraction people that are like, just like close your eyes and think of a Lamborghini and like don't do anything and the Lamborghini will come to your door. I hate to break it to you. The odds are very low that something like that would ever happen. What you would need to do is you need to go and take action and you need to basically like put your own dent in the universe such that the universe will bend and that bend will be the reaction that will give you the results. And you need to do that consistently over and over and over again. And that's going to take time and that's going to be painful. But that's good because the pain is a signal that something's actually happening. There's a response going on. And this is a very common analogy that everyone uses. I'm going to use it as well because it's just so damn obvious. If you go to the gym and you work out and you don't feel sore, like you don't feel tired when you leave, that means you haven't really worked out. You haven't really pushed yourself hard enough and you're not going to experience growth. Growth happens as a consequence of pain. And again, when I say pain, I don't mean go and like hurt yourself or I don't mean things of that nature at all. But I mean, you're going to go through a lot of mental pain and cognitive pain. And when you're trying to learn new skills and you're pushing yourself to put new knowledge in your head, and you're adopting these new skill sets and character traits and habits is going to be painful and it's going to suck and it's going to suck continuously for years. It takes like five years usually to get really good at something, maybe 10 years. And I know that's not what you want to hear. I know that in today's like marketing dominated um, world, everyone's like, oh, like get abs in like three days or get rich in eight days or like guys, that's none of that is possible. These guys are just trying to get rich off of you. I mean, like the reality is to be truly great at something. It takes years. I mean, think about this. It took me nine years of studying electrical engineering, four years bachelor's, two years master's, three years PhD. And I'm still nowhere near the best. I'm still nowhere as good as I'd like to be. But it takes time and it takes consistent effort and practice. Now, sure, there are things you can do to reduce the time, but you cannot bypass the pain. The pain is always going to be there. Frustration is always going to be there. The long hours are going to be there if you really want to achieve something great. Now, again, this pain is to achieve the desired skill set to suit the desired mindset, which the combination of them should put you in a position which is the desired state. And if you remember what I discussed earlier, the desired state is you never have to ask for a job, you never have to beg for a job, people come to you and ask you to work for them. That's the ideal case. That's where we want to place you. Now this takes care of mindset and skill set, which are both pieces of software that we're basically going to install in your brain. Let's talk about something that's equally important, which is hardware. Now your body, your physical body, the biological body that carries the electrical impulses, which we call thoughts, and that's basically where like your software is basically stored. That's extremely important to take care of. And you can basically do that with very simple stuff, which is get enough sleep, don't eat crap, try to exercise, 
exercise or engage in some type of movement whenever you can possible and don't be on social media all the time and disconnect ideally meditate ideally engage in prayer if you are like a religious or a faithful person that's going to help your brain at least like declutter and definitely try to take care of your body and the best way to take care of your body is to learn about it so one thing that i have done that has served me really well is i have read countless books on nutrition on neurochemistry on how the brain works um, and i've watched a lot of podcasts by a guy named andrew huberman i believe he's a professor at stanford and he talks a lot about uh, focus and he talks a lot about neurochemistry and the chemicals involved in the brain and how they affect how you perform on a day-to-day -day basis and how things like sleep and diet and caffeine and other substances impact your performance and impact your cognition which is where your software takes place and you definitely want to learn about serotonin you want to learn about dopamine extremely important you want to learn about bdnf brain derived neurotrophic factor and you also want to learn about adrenaline and you want to learn about how you can use deadlines to stimulate and get your body to like do things and take action consistently on time and basically once you have a good understanding of neurochemistry and basically how your physical body performs then you're only going to take your mindset and skill set which are the software that go inside your brain you're going to take that stuff to the next level because now you're taking it and you're putting it in the best hardware possible now think about it if i give you the best piece of code and then you go and install it on a crappy computer that has really bad hard drive really bad processor and like really crappy ram is not going to do very well versus if you take that same set of software that same piece of software and you put it on a computer that has more ram more hard drive and more higher processing speed is going to perform way better and that's basically the argument for taking care of the hardware which will take care of the software now there's one element that is not really spoken about which i kind of believe or at least like to believe exists which is basically your soul like who you are deep down and the thing that makes you you the thing that's actually if you like quiet everything down and listen very carefully it's the voice within you that tells you what you want that's the voice that guides you or at least in my case i i that's the voice within me that tells me what i should be doing and that's something i learned from steve jobs and that you should listen to that voice and you should drown out all this noise such that you can listen to the signal and to the voice within you that's telling you what you want to do what kind of life you want to live and it's going to be very faint it's going to be very faint but you want to listen to it and you want to trust it because other people are going to disagree with it and other people will say you're delusional but the thing that i have found is to live a really exciting and extraordinary life you need a healthy level of delusion because look at someone like elon musk when he said oh i'm going to build spacecraft that's going to take us to mars everyone said hey man you are really delusional you got to stop doing that his friends said don't do that a lot of people said don't do that and he went ahead and did it anyway and many people who were to go on and build some things that are extraordinary whether you like them or not but let's just observe the fact that they innovated and they built extraordinary things a lot of that came from a little bit of a healthy delusion which like bends reality a little bit and just pushes beyond what we humans can imagine and that's because we humans like the world before you was built by people who are no smarter than you it was built by people who now you have more access to information and you're basically way smarter than all of them you have the capacity to be way smarter than all of them you can learn from them you can learn from their lessons we should always use your own critical thinking and basically use your own reasoning to come up with your own picture of the world and in my opinion a little bit of a healthy delusion especially if it pushes you in the direction of making the world a better place i think it's really good to have and it's going to serve you very well and i actually made a video a while back about decoding the mind of a top skilled engineer and what a really skilled engineer's mind should look like it's a really good video i made it a while back when i was at my parents basement you should go ahead and watch it it's going to be a really nice follow-up to what i just described over here peace love